Hey everybody, wanted to do an update here on my new German Blue Ram. I was asked about him the other day, and I just wanted to assure everybody that it is doing really well, it is looking fantastic, its colors are awesome, it's getting nice and plump, it's eating well, got absolutely no concerns about this fish whatsoever. I was talking to a friend of mine, however, recently, and his concern was the nitrates in my tanks. I'm not shy about the fact that I generally let the nitrates in my tanks get above 40 parts per million. That doesn't concern me at all. But there's a few fish out there who are renowned for being hypersensitive to nitrate levels, and German blue rams are one of them. I personally don't believe that to be true necessarily, but I've also never really kept German Blue Ram, so I'm going to keep my opinion about that to myself for now. But I can talk about nitrates and other fish that are not said to be hypersensitive to the nitrates. Uh, discus is another one that comes to mind, and cardinal tetras are another one that are said to be uh, really, really super sensitive to nitrates. So the friend of mine that I was talking to is of the school of thought that nitrates are toxic to these fish or that are, nitrates are toxic to fish in general but some fish are just really sensitive to the nitrates more so than others these german blue rams being one of them and you know he wished me luck but he also kind of expressed the opinion he thinks that you know above 20 parts per million or so if i'm keeping this ram at 40 parts per million uh it's going to die within a few weeks and of course it's already been in here longer than that but you know, that's what he's saying. So we're going to wait and see what happens. It's already been over a month that it's in here. It's doing well. It's thriving. It's looking good. And I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on the nitrates in this tank. So I didn't do a water change just now, but I did check the nitrates and that's what they look like at the moment. This is not the best look. First of all, we've got a 2700K light, so it's already got a lot of orange light in it, and I'm not really holding this properly against the card, and so on and so forth. I'm just trying to give you an idea. Um, you can see there, it's not red, but we are definitely at at least 40 parts per million, um, maybe scooch higher than that, but we're definitely already sitting at 40 parts per million, which honestly, I gotta say, is a little lower than I was expecting it to be. So I have been trying to work myself up to shooting a video specifically talking about nitrates, at least my opinion and the research I've done and the little uh, pseudo scientific -y experiments I've done in my own right over the years. I haven't done any of this stuff in a long time because I basically uh, developed my knowledge to my satisfaction years ago and I haven't continued pursuing it and continuing, you know, just because other people don't believe me, you know, I'm not going to keep doing experiments because somebody else doesn't believe me. I've done the experiments. I've seen what I've seen, and I know, you know, what my experience has been. And it's a bit controversial. If you've been following my videos for any length of time, you'll know that I don't really view nitrates the way most people in the aquarium hobby do. I personally think nitrates are the boogeyman of the aquarium hobby. Um, and by that, I mean that it's something that's not really scary at all, but is made out to be some big, terrible monster that's going to kill all your fish and so on and so forth. And I just don't believe that. I also think that nitrates are, I don't want to say a lazy excuse, but there's so many reasons fish can die that are so inexplicable. And, you know, a lot of times people, oh, well, you know, if the nitrates were up at 40 parts per million, you know, well, that must be it. And it's just a nice way for us to give ourselves some sort of finality. Uh, we as human beings don't like to just leave things hanging. And the idea that that fish died and, you know, obviously something caused it to die, but I have no idea what. That's kind of annoying. And so if we can give ourselves some sort of closure by saying, oh, well, it must have been the nitrates, you know, that's a nice little go-to uh, reason for our fish had problems or our fish got sick or our fish died or whatever. And I personally don't buy it. I don't believe it. And I've got my reasons for saying that and I will get into them. But that's going to be a long-winded, lengthy conversation, discussion type video. And I've really got to be in the mood to sit down and do those kind of videos 
Um, honestly, I have to be in a little bit of a cranky mood to sit down and even want to do those videos. When I'm in a good mood, I don't really feel like stirring up the controversy. I've already got to be a little bit annoyed to begin with to even want to talk about this kind of stuff. So it'll happen at some point. I will discuss uh, my opinion about nitrates. And notice I said my opinion about nitrates uh, in a video coming up here in the future. But there you go. That's a look at my long finned gbr i believe it might have some gold gbr genetics in there i'm not entirely sure it was labeled as a long finned uh german blue ram but it definitely has that sort of yellowish look especially that sort of orangey yellow look about its face which makes me wonder if it doesn't have some other sort of genetics in there but it's looking good it's thriving it's doing beautiful and it's probably been a week to maybe 10 days since I've done a water change on this tank, and that's about where we're sitting, which is about typical for me. Again, this is a little lower than I was expecting it to be, honestly, but uh, there you are. That's what it looks like now. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll follow along. I will do nitrate tests in this tank from time to time, and we'll do water changes. I'm not going to deliberately let the nitrates get high. I'm not going to do anything that I think is going to risk this fish. I'm going to maintain this tank the way I normally would maintain it, which is... Not really anything special. The only thing I'm doing different for this tank because of the GBR is the temperature is much higher. If you'll notice, I've got that air stone in there. Uh, if you know me, you know I don't like air stones and bubbles in my tanks, but I've got this tank running up about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And at those temperatures, you've really, really got to supplement um, the gas exchange. You've really got to uh, facilitate as much gas exchange as you possibly can to try to keep the tank oxygenated. During the day with all that vegetation in there and all the light shining on it, lots of oxygen is being released into the water, but at night the plants actually consume oxygen and will actually help to deplete the uh, tank. And then of course with that warm water like that really being at the limit of what can even hold oxygen, um, you know, it, it's very important when, uh, up at these high temperatures like that to have that uh, air stone in there. So that is the only reason, that's the only accommodation I'm making for this GBR. As I've said before, there's two schools of thought that I've tried to keep these before when I first started keeping fish and they all died on me and none of them thrived. They all just immediately started looking rough and looked worse and worse and worse until within a few weeks they were all dead. And eventually I gave up on them because I was told they were such sensitive fish and, you know, they were like the discus. They were very sensitive to nitrates and so on and so forth. So I gave up on them. But the other school of thought is that they're sensitive to lower temperatures and you've got to keep these fish above 82 or 83 degrees uh, to keep them healthy. And I never did that before. I always just kind of assumed that was an exaggeration and I always kept them around um, you know, 77, 78 degrees the way my other tanks were. I never really made any special accommodations um, temperature-wise. So that is what I'm doing with this fish. I've got the temperature up around 85 degrees, and that's all I'm doing differently. I'm not going to stay on top trying to keep those nitrates down at 10 parts per million or whatever. If they get up to 50 or 60 parts per million between water changes, that's I'm not going to worry about it. And I will... Uh, you know, I will check. I will keep my eye on that as we do water changes and as time goes on. So it'll be a nice little sort of ongoing uh, experiment to see how this GBR is affected by higher nitrate levels. Not ridiculous nitrate levels, but higher nitrate levels, you know, in the 40 to 60 parts per million range. So make sure you're subscribed and that way you won't miss, you know, what's going on with this tank. I will be getting in here and doing some work pretty soon. My swamp weed is growing out of control again. I've got new roots and everything coming off, so I'm going to whack that back and, uh, you know, sort of start over with getting it to thicken up and bush out. Um, but I definitely got to get some of that verticality off of there and chop some of that top end off. So look forward to that. Look forward to my upcoming nitrate video. That's going to be a lengthy, long-winded one. Uh, and yes, I know we are nine minutes into this quickie, so that gives you some kind of idea of what to expect about the nitrate video, probably looking at a half an hour or more. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss that or anything else. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget this one is my office tank. I'll see you real soon in the next one.